Welcome to Crime Time News and Entertainment with a Buzz. This one is called, this is how we christen a new plaza. We are speaking about Hongway Plaza that is in Portmore. Portmore is in St. Catherine at the Apple Vives phone store to be specific. So people, what we saw is a set of young men that pretty much scope out the people in place. So we look like they were making money. So we had all sorts of goodies, specifically Apple iPhone stuff like those, in which those are hot commodities. So therefore, that store must be making boko cash. Don't know the time of the robbery. However, we know that them leave with some goodies and them leave with some cash, and them leave a set of people spoke, meaning shook, wondering if this was going to be their last day. Obviously, they did not take away anybody, which is always a good thing. Whenever there's any sorts of robbery in which any sorts of tool is used and then people's lives are spared, we have to give credit where credit is due. Now, I don't know if you was watching, but the faces of these young men, they were shown very clearly when they entered the premises. Pictures on the screen as I speak. And then at the end of that video that I showed you, one of the young men, I think the last one that went through the door after they completed their robbery task or mission, he threw away what seems to be some sorts of cigar, some sorts of spliff. Now, people, I don't know if Jamaica's finest detectives use any sorts of DNA or any sorts of things when they are doing their forensic. I am assuming whatever officer was there on the scene probably see the cigarette when him threw out the cigarette and say, they know, sister. The boy I forget charged with arson. I burn him one burn down the people in place. You know much to build back a place. All the while missing the point that you could probably extract some sorts of DNA from the spliff or the spliff deal. But people like me say this is Jamaica. Hopefully those pictures would be used by our finest detectives and find these people and pretty much put them out of their misery as in send them to the afterlife. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, it seems as if your Prime Minister Andrew Holness and his JLP party has a whole bunch of questions that they have to answer because it seems as if your Prime Minister finds himself in a whole bunch of controversy, a whole bunch of hot water once again. There was some sorts of investigation being done and it seems as if there are some accounts that need to be accounted for. Accounts that have the name of Andrew Holness and other persons in the JLP. We know that there was the illicit six. We know that there was the illicit eight. We know that there is all sorts of statutory declaration yet to be declared by your prime minister. We know that the prime minister started in this politics thing very broke. Likewise, his wife. But they have all sorts of complex that is being built in about the billion dollars or close category. So we have to ask the question, I wish part them get the money from? I where them get them billions they charge you? Them boy are thief, them bad in a party. So I'm going to let you listen to Cliff Hughes, what he has to say as it pertains to that investigation. And then I am going to give my piece. Take a listen, take a look to this not so beautiful bean footage. The report has apparently, and notice I choose, I'm choosing my words very, very carefully, because me not see it. Me not have a copy. Yeah? Apparently, the report has found a number of bank accounts bank accounts where the Prime Minister's name is attached to bank accounts that apparently were not declared And this is where we want to see the report. Why 
were they not declared? Why? Did he use them? Over what period of time did he use them? Now, people, here are the straight facts. Whenever you have a crooked, hidden agenda, hiding all sorts of stuff, cannot declare your statutory income. Whenever there are some sorts of illicit enrichment on your name, it tells you that something is into something wherever there is smoke, there is fire. You hear this man Cliff you say, he did not see the reports, him just hear about it from a credible source. He is not going to come out there and quote from a source such as your favorite blogger. No sorts of reputation, no sorts of credibility. But he is quoting because he feels confident in where he hears it. Even though he does not have a physical copy, if some of that is credible tell you something, then you are going to take it as the gospel. So he might tell you, say, him not see it, and me not tell you, say, me not see it, but you would um, consider him to be one of the more credible sources, especially the fact that he would be more leaning onto the JLP side, so therefore he would have reasons to put out stuff that is not incriminating against them. So I just I say, we have to come to the conclusion that it is right. Now, people, you and I know that there's a whole bunch of tea for it going on in our politics. Let's face it. No politician goes into politics because of the love of people and the love of country. Their ulterior motive is always enriching themselves and then get the F-U-C-K out. Retire very rich. That's been going on for a couple of decades. And as the years goes by, and as the new generation goes by, them get worse and worse. So there's no sort of reason that we should believe that these new sets of prime minister or politicians or MPs or whatever is any sort of different. If the difference is, it is going to be worse. So people, when you hear stuff like this, that means that people are getting money where they can't even count. That means that the money is so much that they have to get accounts over here, accounts over there. But people, here's the thing why I say Jamaica is good for criminals and bad for investigation. Had this been America or any sort of first world country, America specifically, once you use your social security and open a bank over here, so if you go over there so, and go open the next account, that bank will tell you that. What is the reason why early on today you went and opened a bank account over that place and you come back a couple of hours later? Everything is linked. There's all sorts of documentation, paper trail. These people open all sorts of accounts over Swiss, Switzerland, over Cayman, over all over the place, under them son, in them dead, anti everything. So we know that so these people are criminal. So we should never be surprised when you hear stuff like this because it has been going on for years. It is in their natural instinct. It is in their M.O. And I bet in my comment section you're going to have some sorts of brainwash, well better yet, brain D-E-A-D, J-L-P, telling me that I am a PNP because I never talk bad about the PNP. Well, guess what? Because the JLP is leading right now, because the JLP is doing all sorts of illegal activity, I will wait until such time, then I also do the same. Until I am given the opportunity, like the JLP always affords me, that is when I am going to talk. Point blank and period. Next thing that is popping in the news, I always use a saying, a wise man learns from his mistake, a wiser man or woman learns from the mistakes of others. But it seems as if a specific family that was marked for D-E-A-T-H in a palmer's cross did not see the notice board, them never get the memo, them never see the message in the bottle. Because the message was obviously clear. A couple weeks ago, a young lady named Debbie Ann Barrett, she lost her husband in a Palmer's Cross. He was a mechanic. He was working on some sorts of vehicle when some people of the unscrupulous gunman type rolled up, blazed him up. A couple of weeks later, Debbie Ann Barrett's Thursday to be specific of last week, was at some sorts of bar on the premises in which 
she is some sort of postmistress. She was blazed up, taken out on the spot, rushed to the place of recovery. However, too late was the call that was Thursday. On or about Sunday again, a couple of days later, a man known as Omar Cook, who happens coincidentally be the brother of Miss Debbie Ann Barrett's, he was working as a mechanic on some sorts of truck when some people roll up, blaze him up and take with themselves. Now the popo are asking the question. They want to come to the bottom of this, of why it is that this family seems to be obviously marked for D-E-A-T-H. Because based on what they are saying, they don't have any sorts of motive. So apparently, when the husband of Miss Barrett lost his life, he did not or she did not divulge what could be the motive. After Debian lost her life, I guess the next brother, Omar Cook, did not divulge to the poor poor that, listen, there's some sorts of D-E-A-D left legacy. We have some sorts of cousin or family or brother where the people them want. So therefore, if them can't catch quack up, we are going to shut and them going to catch with and bust with shut, bust with neck. It seems as if this is the case in this case. So I say this to say that if you ever find yourself in a predicament such as this, I would suggest that you exit stage left as soon as possible. Do not wait after you see your sister lose her life or your husband in this case lose them life. Then you see your sister lose your life. You cannot be careless with yours because obviously you could be next. Chances are all indications are pointing that listen. Somebody pretty much don't like this family. Somebody pretty much is trying to do a total wipeout of this family. Me just I say, point blank and period. Now the next thing that is popping in the news, it seems as if what they say is so true and such is the case in this case. As in, nothing good happens after midnight, especially on these lonely roads. I am speaking about an incident that left one person D-E-A-D and four other persons in custody. This happened along the Whitehall Main Road that is in St. Mary, based on what the Popo said. In the wee hours of the morning, they were on some sorts of operational patrol, headed from Anata Bay, heading towards Port Maria, when upon reaching a specific intersection, they saw a grey Toyota Axio Blazing, the poor poor jumped out, stepped out on the road. Hey boy, pull over the vehicle. Obviously, that person did not obey. So therefore, impressed pedal to the metal. There was some sorts of chase. And of course, you always know the script. The foot kind of get heavy. The foot kind of get shaky. And then people lose control. Lick up in a some sorts of wall. Bad idea. Based on the Popo account, it is said that at least three men alighted from out of the vehicle, start blaze up all sorts of can after the Popo, after the smoke clear. One individual known as Spooky, he was D-E-A-D upon the spot, pronounced at the hospital, then claim said they recover some sorts of tool. It is said that two other individuals that were in the vehicle take both feet. However, based on information, it is said that there were also two other females or two females in the vehicle. I guess those two females start to get bummy and start call up people's name. The Popo went for one of those individuals that escaped from the vehicle. It is said that the next individual would later turn himself into the Popo. So based on the results, I guess we could consider this a very successful mission because at the end of the day, one criminal element allegedly got blazed up. Spooky E is now D-E-A-D. One individual was caught afterward and the next one turning himself. And two females that were also participants or passengers in the vehicle, they were also held Consider themselves very lucky because whenever you're in any sorts of pie pie out with the popo, the popo are going to try to wet up that vehicle as if there was some sorts of storm. Luckily for these two young ladies, they were not injured. Whatever side of the bed that they slept on, they should consider themselves very lucky because they are dead women walking at this point. 
I am sure that after this experience, they will learn that, listen, if you mess with the wrong sorts of people, you might end up messing up yourself, ending up in the wrong place. But like them always say, them like bad man in them hole. So therefore, if them love bad man that much, they are going to go in the hole with those same bad man eventually. Now I see that maybe a couple of days later, we see people, residents from the era, them come out with all sorts of placard, them start with the all sorts of revolt, all sorts of thing I say. One of the youths that went into the popo I was arrested, he is an innocent boy. He never do anything, he is a hard working youth, he is not involved in any sorts of criminal activity. Based upon what the Popo said, there was some sorts of pie pie out. Whether or not any sorts of tool was found, unless the Popo are big time liars or they are just pretty much blind or they might hear stuff, they are delusionals. The story or the side from the story versus what the residents are saying, it is the polar opposites. So therefore, we need Indicom to come in and get to the bottom of this to say who is lying or who is telling the truth. But then again, based on what we've seen so far, we can just expect that this incident is going to be swept under the rug. Whether it is extrajudicial or whatever, we will never know. But people like me say, 2.45 in the morning, you out there in a car with three, four other men and two other women and the poor poor stop you. Like I always said, don't start no ish, won't be no ish. If you obey, there would not be any sorts of controversial way to which you might have lost your life. Simple as that. Keep it simple. Don't complicate things and complicate your life out of living. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, it seems as if these Jamaicans leave from Jamaica with them dirty dulcimina grip and they are putting Jamaica on the map again for all the wrongest reasons. The picture that you see on the screen is of a young man. His name is Sanjay Kemar Morgan, Jamaican national, like I said. Based on information coming out of Antigua on Sunday, the 8th of September at about 6 a.m., up on some sorts of cell check, they realized that Mr. Morgan was MIA. He might as well have been in Miami as in Florida because they don't know exactly where he is at. Now, people, I do not know the square miles or how big Antigua is. It is not like United States where you have 50 odd states. So, therefore, if you escape from out of immigration, once you can get where you can hide in the cover of all of those 300 million people. Antigua, I am assuming, is much, much smaller and anybody is going to see this face and know this face. Unless, of course, him start bleach out or him get black back. People, me don't know the circumstances. But me just I say, this youth broke out of the immigration detention center and these people are looking for him. Don't know the circumstances that lead him there if it was just not the proper documentation or he did some sorts of criminal activity. As soon as I get some more pertinent information, I'll be sure to divulge ASAP. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. And last but not least, please subscribe to my next channel. It is called Jamaica Dancehall Source. I'll be pinning the link to that channel in the description of this video. Bless up.